I know right now tis the season for holiday cooking and holiday baking and hosting holiday gatherings with lots of cooking and baking. And what nobody seems to talk about is cooking fatigue. I can't be the only one who occasionally is just over it. I just get tired of cooking and sometimes I don't want to think about it anymore. And while picking up some takeout or ordering a pizza is certainly something that we do from time to time, it's not sustainable over the course of several days because it will really break the bank quickly. So in today's video, I'm going to give you lots of ideas for super easy meals that you can make when you're tired of cooking. And a lot of these are things that come together very quickly and much cheaper than what you will be able to get in the drive through or from a takeout restaurant. By the way, I get asked about my glasses all the time here on my channel, probably as much or maybe more than any other item. They're from Pear Eyewear and they are sponsoring today's video and I'm gonna talk about them here in a little bit, but for now I'm gonna grab my things and we're gonna go inside the store and I'm gonna give you a ton of ideas. I am a sucker for an Arby's roast beef sandwich and I have noticed in my grocery stores recently that they've been carrying the Arby's sauce over where they keep the ketchups. So I had this idea that I might be able to recreate those sandwiches by visiting the deli and getting some thinly shaved roast beef. Then I could just heat that up and toss it on some buns and have like an Arby's roast beef sandwich. Or you could pick up the cheddar sauce or queso and maybe recreate the beef and cheddar, especially if you get the onion style buns. Plus maybe, you know, toss a bag of these into your air fryer for a complete copycat meal that will be much cheaper than picking it up at an actual Arby's, am I right? Another favorite thing of mine to pick up in the deli are the chicken tenders. And then I'll grab a bag salad kit like this and I'll chop up those chicken tenders, put them in with the bag salad, mix it up and maybe even roll it up into a wrap, like a spinach tortilla or something to make really easy chicken Caesar wraps. That is a favorite of my family. My kids ask for those all the time. Frozen burritos are a quick meal or snack for an individual in our house, but I've also used these to create family meals. There are all kinds of ideas on the internet, on the Google, on the Pinterest for how to dress these up and turn them into delicious smothered burritos or baked burritos, something you can throw in a casserole dish with some other things and make something really delicious with. And I've done the same thing with taquitos. Just look up there in the corner. See, told you. I just utilized one of these stir fry kits in a budget meals video and it's just the veggies and the sauce. So then you can make it what you, what you want to. You can add your own proteins, you can add noodles, you can add rice for a complete meal. They have several different options in the frozen section. They even have some that come with multiple servings. So you would be able to make one one night and then put one back in the freezer for another time. And they also have these in the fresh section as well. I've noticed they have some fresh um, stir fry kits that come with the sauce included. So that would be a really quick meal and probably much cheaper than going through the Panda Express drive through That's one of my daughter's favorites now, but it's still a special treat. I've said it before, but I think it bears repeating. These breakfast bowls are a breakfast taco shortcut. Just add tortillas. Here's an idea for you that starts with one of these gigantic take and bake cheese pizzas for eight bucks. Grab one of those. Grab one of these rotisserie chickens or you can grab one of these containers where the chicken is already pulled off the bone for you. Pick up some of these blue cheese crumbles, some buffalo ranch like this one here from Heinz and then essentially you can build your own buffalo ranch chicken pizza. Yummy. Or another idea would be to pick up some of this ham, slice it up really thin, and put it on top of the pizza with some pineapple and some barbecue sauce and have like a Hawaiian style pizza. If you are a fan of biscuits and you have not discovered bubble up casseroles, look up some recipes. There are tons of options that start with a can of refrigerated biscuit dough and a lot of them only have like four or five, maybe six ingredients, lots of options there. But if you're looking for a cinnamon roll shortcut, don't buy the canned cinnamon rolls get the Rhodes frozen cinnamon rolls instead. They come a dozen to a bag. They're less than $5 right now. And I'm telling you, these are just as easy and taste way better than the canned variety. In fact, I don't think I can really make them from scratch that are that much better and certainly as cheap as these right here. Hamburger Helper is such a divisive topic on my channel, but there's a reason why it continues to be a thing. It's easy. I mean, you pick one of these boxes up and you throw in some cooked meat and a little bit of milk and water and voila, you have a complete meal. And there are ways that you can upgrade this. I've actually made some videos, one pretty recently, where I give some ideas for extra things I add to it to kind of jazz it up. And of course, you can make 
homemade versions that are a little bit more work than this, but not that much more work. In fact, I am planning an entire video around that concept, a skillet meals video that will be sort of like homemade versions of Hamburger Helper. That'll be coming out soon. So for more super easy meal ideas along those lines, be on the lookout. I have several more ideas to share with you, but before we go on, I wanna take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Pear Eyewear. I have two different frames from Pear Eyewear, and I do wear prescription lenses. This is the Otis in blue, and then I have the Casper in pink, and these also have blue light filtering lenses. That's an option that you can add to your order. But one of the best things about Pear is that you don't have to commit to just one color of frame because in addition to the frames and the lenses, they sell these toppers that magnetically clip onto the glasses so you can change up the style without having to buy another entire pair of glasses. But my favorite toppers are the sun toppers because I can instantly change my prescription glasses into sunglasses without having to wait for lenses to transition or having to put bulky sunglasses over the top or just switch out to a completely different pair of glasses, right? And if you wear corrective lenses like me, you know that you need to wear your glasses, but it's also one of the first things that people notice about you. So it's really great to be able to change up the style without having to buy a whole bunch of different glasses. It basically becomes an accessory, right? Pair Eyewear does offer glasses for women, men, and kids, and ordering is really easy, especially utilizing their virtual try-on feature on their website. So you can see what the glasses might look like on your face before you even order them. And as far as the toppers go, they have so many cute toppers, different colors and different patterns, but also lots of themes with different characters like Peanuts characters, Harry Potter themed glasses, NBA, Coca-Cola, Sesame Street. I mean, there's so many fun toppers that you can buy for your glasses. I've been wearing glasses for the better part of 30 years. And personally, I think that pair eyewear is very affordable, especially considering the versatility and the quality of the glasses. But if you want an additional 15% off your first pair, you can just visit the link in the description box below. Again, link in the description, 15% off your first pair with pair eyewear. And thank you again to pair for sponsoring today's video. We are not above eating canned soup in this household. And in fact, one of my favorite homemade versions of chicken noodle soup calls for cream and Parmesan cheese. So to upgrade one of these cans of soup, I actually did this in a recent meal prep video. I will just open up these cans and put them in a pot and add just a little splash of cream, a little bit of grated, you know, from the green can Parmesan cheese and stir it into this and it helps make it taste closer to homemade. There are all kinds of upgrades to canned soup too. Things that you can do by adding a little bit of extra shredded chicken or maybe a little bit of extra vegetables. I add noodles to different vegetable soups. In fact, that's one of my favorite ways to eat vegetable beef soup is to add noodles to it. There are lots of ways that you can upgrade these cans so that you're getting just a little bit more bang from your buck but you're not having to do all the work of making it from scratch. We're actually having one of our favorite soup hacks or soup upgrades if you will well tonight is the two ingredient tomato soup with just pasta sauce and heavy cream. And I usually use about a cup of half and half or heavy cream for each 24 ounce jar of pasta sauce that I'm using. And I just pour that all into a pan and I heat it over low heat and kind of keep stirring it to make sure that it doesn't, you know, scorch or burn with the cream in it. Doesn't take but a few minutes and voila, we have this delicious creamy tomato soup. I've had so many people try this and tell me that they cannot tell that it's not homemade. Like they can't tell that we didn't spend hours putting that together. But one of the other hacks that I've learned with that, because what goes better with tomato soup than grilled cheese, but maybe I don't want to stand over the griddle and make a bunch of grilled cheeses. So instead I buy this Texas toast that has the cheese already on it and I'll just pop those under the broiler and it's like having open face grilled cheese <laughs> with our tomato soup so I don't even have to make those. Easy. And you can do so much with these as a starter. I'm sure you've seen the hack where people make little pizzas out of them by adding pizza toppings and putting them in under the broiler. You could also add lunch meat like turkey or ham and make little grilled sandwiches. You could scramble up some eggs, maybe add some bacon or sausage and make really easy breakfast sandwiches with these. I think I've even seen people use these on top of a Bowl of like French onion soup <laughs> instead of like adding like the croutons and the cheese or something. Basically, this is like one big giant cheesy crouton to put on your bowl of French onion soup. Here in Oklahoma with our hot summers, a lot of the year I try not to turn on my ovens, but this is one of the best times of the year for me to be utilizing these. And sheet pan meals are a really great quick and easy meal. There are so many different options out there for a variety of different starches, 
different vegetables and different proteins that you can basically throw all on one pan, season it a little bit, and pop it into the oven and cook everything at the same time. I have made sheet pan meals with potatoes. I made them with potato gnocchi. I've even made them with little frozen tortellinis before as the starch, and then just kind of perused my refrigerator for different veggies maybe that I have hanging out. Some proteins that work really well on sheet pan meals are things like um, shrimp, which cooks really quickly, little bite-sized chicken pieces, of course, and also something that's already fully cooked, like fully cooked meatballs or smoked sausage. We always have bags of tortilla chips in this household because we never met a plate of nachos that we didn't like. <laughs> nachos were one of the first things that I learned how to make myself because you can make them using the microwave, right? And in its most basic form, I mean, it's chips and cheese, but it's a great way to utilize leftovers if you have leftovers from the grill, like chicken or steak and even if you don't have those things you could use things like beans you could add sour cream you could add avocado I mean there's so many ways that you can change up you know nachos based on just the things you have lying around to throw together a really really quick meal baked potatoes are also a really great idea for using up leftovers or just something that's really versatile that you can add lots of different toppings to to make various meals i know that the problem there is that baked potatoes take a pretty long time to cook but you can make baked potatoes using your slow cooker you can get them going earlier in the day so that they're ready when you come home and i think i also know that people will utilize their air fryers to make baked potatoes and and sometimes when I'm in a pinch, I'll just use a fork and poke some holes in it and I'll pop it in the microwave for a few minutes. Sometimes I'll just do that to kind of part cook it and then I'll finish it up in the air fryer or the oven if I don't want to cook it all the way in the microwave. If you are a frequent viewer of my channel, it will come as no surprise that I'm mentioning the crock pot and just how useful it is when you are tired of cooking because there are so many recipes that involve just a few minutes of work. Things that you can throw into your crock pot, turn the thing on, and then you come back later and you have a delicious meal. But one recipe that I wanted to mention specifically that's going to go on our menu very soon that I haven't made in a while is for French dip sandwiches. I did feature these in a video a few years back, but it's been a while and I picked up quite a few subscribers, so maybe you weren't around whenever I mentioned that one. So I'll leave the recipe that I use linked in the description box. Basically, it's just a roast, and I use chuck roast. You toss it into the crock pot with a few cans of soup and maybe a couple of other ingredients, and over the course of the day, it makes this really delicious, tender roast. So not only a great thing to pile on top of sandwiches, but it also produces a delicious au jus for dipping the sandwiches in. So definitely worth trying, a great one for company, or maybe for like a lazy Saturday or Sunday when we're all sitting around and just want watch football or play games or do something something else fun for the holidays that doesn't involve being in the kitchen all day long. I'm actually trying a new shortcut meal with my crock pot tomorrow so let's fast forward and I'll show you what I'm making. I just got tonight's dinner going in the slow cooker behind me and I used a soup mix as a shortcut. This is the chicken tortilla soup mix from Rada, but I've seen mixes like this in the store as well. I ordered this one from Rada, and I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested in that. The package directions say to add a cup of cooked chicken I just used a can of chicken and a can of tomatoes and three cups of water but I added an extra cup to a cup and a half of water because I have one more ingredient that I'm gonna add to this to take it over the top and make it stretch just a little bit farther just kind of make it into something different my soup has been cooking on high for a couple of hours now. I say cooking, it's mostly just been simmering for flavor because everything in here is already cooked. And now I am going to add some cheese tortellini. And I am using the frozen tortellini. I'm probably gonna add about half this 20 ounce bag. Oops, it's a little more than half. <laughs> If you were using fresh tortellini, it probably would only take about 10 minutes or so for those to cook. Since I'm using frozen tortellini, it's gonna cool down what's in my slow cooker and then it'll come back up to temperature. So it'll probably take about 20 to 30 minutes on high. I finished this off with a little shredded cheese and a dollop of sour cream, totally optional. I'm gonna stir that sour cream in because I think it's just gonna help make the soup nice and creamy and delicious. And there you have it, chicken tortilla tortellini soup super easy with like probably less than five minutes of work on my on my part <laughs>
Tis the season for lots of snacks and treats. And I've already shown you guys a few times how to make Chex Mix using your slow cooker so you don't have to make it in the oven. But if you don't wanna take the time to continue stirring that or to measure out all of the ingredients, there are some even easier snack options that you can make this season. I have made a couple of different no-bake crackers. One of them is an Alabama firecracker that utilizes saltine crackers and packet seasonings and oil. And then just a really simple ranch oyster cracker using ranch mix vegetable oil and oyster crackers. You basically just stir all of the ingredients together in those recipes, pour it over the crackers, and you just like let them sit out in a plastic bag and kind of shake it up every now and then. And after a few hours, you have these delicious crackers that you don't even have to bake in the oven. And usually around here in my stores, this stuff right here gets very difficult to find because one of the easiest holiday treats, or really any time of year treat, is the almond bark puff corn. And that's, that's it, the ingredients are actually in the title. All you do is melt the almond bark and you pour it over the puff corn and then you just lay it out on wax paper to set and that's it. If you wanna get really fancy, you can add some sprinkles, but easiest holiday treat ever. If you are enjoying all of the holiday cooking, then more power to you. But if you are starting to feel a little bit of cooking fatigue, I hope that I gave you some good ideas with this video. Don't forget to check out Pear Eyewear. They're linked in the description box below if you want 15% off your first pair with them. And thank you again to Pear for sponsoring. Pick out one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there.